So day eight right here, what is a trading plan? And we're also going to be going over one of my favorite trading strategies, which is a two to one ratio. These are so important and every single trader should have a trading plan and probably follow the two to one ratio, especially if you guys are brand new at trading. So we learned, we learned a lot about entries and exits and we learned a lot of our entries and exits. We haven't dove too much into it, but our entries and exits are from support and resistance, which we did learn all about. We've learned about support and resistance and the three different types of support and resistance, natural, detailed, and pastoral history pattern. We know that we like to buy near support or buy at the break of resistance. And we know we like to sell at the next level of resistance right so what we have right here is what is a trading plan and that two to one ratio so let's start with the first one guys what is a trading plan well a trading plan consists of your entry your exit and your stop loss your trading plan is your formula for your next trade right so when we have a trading plan guys we are saying to ourselves all right where am I getting in on this play where am I getting out on this play and if things go wrong where am I getting out on it? So we get in on our price, right? I want to buy the stock at $1. All right, where do I want to sell the stock at? I want to sell the stock at 125. All right, where if the stock starts falling, where am I going to get out at? Okay, I'm going to get out of the stock at 94 cents. And now you're good to trade. I, there's too many people that just see a stock start spiking. And then what happens? Then they all, you know, just hop in on it and they don't know what's going on. You know, if you jump in on anything, right? You jump in on anything and you don't know what's going on, you're going to be completely lost, right? You want to have a trading plan. And part of that trading plan as well, you know, is understanding why you're hopping in on it, right? Does it have any sort of news? What's the credibility? Does it have any sort of chart set up? What's the float behind it? You know, what's going on with this play? So having a trading plan is going to definitely give you a lot more confidence going into this play because you know everything you have to do, right? Imagine again, you know, being a football team. Imagine being a football team and, you know, what do football teams do? They practice. They go through summer trading. You know, they're always out in the field running plays. Imagine if they didn't have any of those plays set and they go to the huddle and they're just like, all right, what do you want us to do? Uh, you, you run that way. Uh, you run this way and you run that way. Everyone else block for us. All right, break. Is that going to work out very well? No, because they never took the time to put together their plan, right? So that's why, again, our trading plans are so important because it keeps us organized. Trading plans help us cut losses quick and helps maximize profits. Who's ever been a person here who has smaller wins than losses? And you could say if it's you, if you want to. I bet you there's a lot. I bet you there's a lot of people here that when they win, their wins may be $50, $100. But when they lose, their losses are what? $200, $300. You might say, Deck, you know, I'll win, but every time I lose, I take a bigger loss than what I win. Well, a trading plan makes sure that doesn't happen. And how do we make sure that doesn't happen? Well, because we already have our guidelines that we're following. If I buy at $1, I'm not selling until it hits $120, right? That's where I want to sell. And if the stock does not go my way, again, well, then I have a trading uh, area where I'm going to get out at which is going to keep my loss nice and small. My gains are going to be bigger than my losses. So if you follow your trading plan every single time you trade, you know what? Your losses are going to be smaller than your wins. Because there are a lot of people, especially new at trading, the moment they see any sort of profit, they lock it up. Or um, there's two different types of traders, I always say. Again, there's the trader that's either the trader that's very cautious, the trader that always says, oh, all right, you know, the moment I'm up in profit, I lock it in. The moment I'm down in, you know, in a loss, I get out of it. And there's one that's a little bit more wild. The one that always lets their gains go as big as they can, but they also, you know, keep on holding and they lose all their gains. So, you know, it kind of, you have to kind of figure out what type of trader you are, but this trading plan is going to allow you to maximize your gains while again, minimize your losses. So why do we have trading plans? Well, preparation, right? Preparation leads to success and it eliminates fear. If we have fear, we don't really do that well, right? Sometimes a little bit of fear is good because it's going to keep you sharp, keep you on your toes and make sure you know you're following your trading plan. But we don't want to be overwhelmed with fear. And how do we eliminate fear? Well, if you guys don't know what fear is, you know, fear is what we don't know. What do we fear? We fear things we don't know. 
Some people are scared to go in the ocean. Why? Because they can't see the bottom. They are scared of the unknown. Some people are scared to you know, go up to space. And why is that? Because they don't know what they're going to find up there. Some people are scared to be in the dark because they don't know what's around them. That's what we fear. We fear things that we are not 100% sure of. And that is the same exact thing when we carry that over to the stock market. If we have fear, that is because we do not know what's going to happen next on these stocks. We don't know if these stocks are going to go up. We don't know if these stocks are going to go down. We don't know if we're going to make money. We don't know if we're going to lose money. The thing is, fear is going to constantly overwhelm us. So how can we control fear? Well, we have to practice. We have to prepare. The more you prepare, the less fear you will have. All right. I always give the analogy. Imagine you guys are in 12th grade. You guys are having your big calculus test. Seniors, you have to graduate right here. Pass your calculus test. You're going off to college. But, right? But you are a person that says, eh, I don't need to study. I'm good to go. You know, I'll figure it out. And then you sit down. What happens? You get this test in front of you and it looks like something you've never seen before right? You say, oh my gosh, I'm going to, you know, absolutely fail, fail this. I'm not going to the school I want. I'm going to have to retake this class. I don't know any of these answers. My parents are going to kill me. And why is it? Because you didn't study one little bit. On the opposite hand, if you put in the work, if you studied, if you went to our 250 hour video library, if you watched the ultimate trading course, if you paper traded for at least six months, if you've been listening to me and been in chat for at least six months to a year, and you start trading, I bet you your fear is going to be very low. I bet your fear is going to be you know, at an absolute minimum. Now, you might say to yourself, yeah, I'm still a little bit nervous. That's okay, right? Even I get nervous when I trade sometimes, right? And that's you know, because you want a little bit of those nerves still. Keep you sharp. Keep you going, right? I know a lot of you guys know, you know I like to skydive a lot of times. You know, I'll skydive on weekends whenever I'm back home you know, in PA. But you know, no matter how many times I skydive, I still get a little nervous. But how did I get rid of a lot of my fear? It's because I studied. I studied different procedures, emergency procedures, what I'm wearing on my, you know, in my parachute to make me feel better, you know, how I'm you know, uh, pulling my parachute, everything along these lines. This eliminates fear because I'm prepared. And that's the same exact thing with your stock trading. You know the people who lose with their stock trading? The people who sign up and then all of a sudden expect to make a Lamborghini or get a Lamborghini in a week. The people who sign up and they complain they're not making thousands of dollars in a couple days, right? And you know what? They, they figure out they're completely overwhelmed. They're overwhelmed with the information. They're overwhelmed with the emotions. They're overwhelmed with everything going past them, right? Because they are not prepared at all. And that's not saying you're never going to be a great trader. That's just saying you need to take a step back and understand that this, when you guys are trading in the stock market, when you guys are trading, you know, um, right now, if that's YOGA or if that's any of these plays, you're trading against the best traders in the world. You know what? I want to teach you how to be successful, but there's people out there that are doing what? They're looking out after themselves. And if they buy a stock and a stock runs on up, they have no problem selling 10, 20, 30,000 shares. So they get out and make a profit to all you guys, right? And then you guys are sitting up at top. You know, you're the one sitting at the top with this massive amount of shares where what happens? It dumps on down and you lose all your money. The stock market is dog eat dog. And these are professional traders. You're trading in the big boy league. It's basically you're going from nothing to the NFL. You're going from nothing to the NBA. This is where the best traders in the world are. And a lot of people, again, usually get eaten out right away. And they're going to be absolute, absolutely done. So you need to be able to prepare so the moment you do start stock trading, you're not one of those rookie people that just loses your money right away and you're on top of your game. And that's one of the diff uh, very difficult things, right? One of the very difficult things to do is be able to get to that level. Because when you first start trading, a lot of people lose money. They're late, they get emotional, you know, they, they buy a tops, they chase plays, right? All these things. While you know, the people who are experienced that are veterans in the market, they just sit back and just keep making money. So you need to be at the level of a veteran even though you're a rookie. So what is the standard trading plan, guys? When I am looking for a, a day trade, what's my standard day, uh, trading plan? Well, I follow what I'm going to teach you guys, which is the two to one ratio. All right. The two to one ratio is so great. It's going to teach you guys how to win twice your money. So you can honestly lose two times, win once, and you're back to even. 
How great does that sound? You don't have a good trade, all right, you lose once. You have another bad trade, okay, you lose twice. You win once, you're back to even. How about you win two times in a row? Well, now you can lose four times, and you know, then you're back to even if you wanted to. But you know, especially when you start getting better and better and better, we don't want to lose two times. We want to win once, maybe lose once. Win four times, lose once. Win six times, lose once, right? You know, that's what we really want to see. So we always go after usually around a 25 cent profit. Our stop loss is going to be somewhere around 10 to 12 cents. And this allows you, as I said, to win once to make back two losses or get ahead in case losses occur. All right. So notice that 25 cent target stop loss, 12 cents. It's basically half of our target. So what is that two to one ratio guys, that two to one ratio, it's all about risk versus reward, right? Sadly, a lot of investors might end up losing a lot of money when they try to invest their own money. There are many reasons for this, but one of them, one of these, uh, those uh, comes from the inability of individual investors to manage risk. Risk over reward is a common term in financial uh, services that we have here. But what does it mean? Simply put, investing money into the market has a high degree of risk and you should be uh, compensated if you're going to take that risk. If somebody you marginally trust asks for a $50 loan and offers to pay you $60 in two weeks, it might not be worth the risk. But what if they offer to pay you back $100? The risk of losing $50 so the chance to make $100 might be appealing. That's two to one risk versus reward, which is a, a ratio which a lot of professionals, investors start to get interested because it allows investors to double their money. Similarly, if the person offered you $150, then the ratio goes to three to one. So what we're basically getting out here, guys, you know, two to one ratio, two to one ratio, two to one ratio. Let me go ahead and draw a picture for you to make it absolutely as easy as possible. And we'll dive into this together. So what would be our two to one ratio right here? Let's make this nice and big. And let's all say, right, that we buy a uh, to, to do, and I'm going to kind of draw this a little bit, a couple different ways. First thing, the two to one ratio would be if we buy a stock right here. Okay, this is our stock. If we buy it right here, where do we want our target? We want to have our target all the way up here, right? This would be, let's say a 25 cent gain. 25 cent gain right here, all right? Now, if we have 1,000 shares, that's going to be a $250 profit, right? So if we have, 20, uh, if we have a 25 cent a gain and we have 1,000 shares, right? We'll be able to make a $250 profit. Now, let's say if I have a 10 cent stop loss, all right? So here's my stop loss right here. And let's say this is again, minus 10 cents, right? Now, how much would this be? This would be minus 100, right? Because if I have 1,000 shares, now this would even be a little bit better than a two to one ratio. This means if I follow this alone, right? If I follow this alone, every time I win, I win $250. Every time I lose, I lose $100. So let's kind of draw this as if we're graphing our wins and losses. And let's you know, keep this area right here. This would basically be zero, all right? So we'll have this area right here. This would represent zero. Let me redraw that real quickly to do, 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 do. All right, cool. Now, let's say what happens. We start off, we have one loss. All right, we have one loss. Boom, right? Not that big of a deal. We have one loss. All right, let's get, go again. You know, we, we trade again, we have another loss. All right, one more loss, not that bad. Let's say our next trade we win. We're automatically, what happened? We're not only back above zero, we're actually up 50 bucks right now, right? So we're actually above, you know, where we started. And let's say we win again on our next trade. Well, now again, we're all the way up here, right? Now let's say again, we, you know, hit a little, you know, have a little trouble and we have a bad loss right here. All right, not too bad because again, it's only $100. This is a $250 area, right? This is our $250 jump, right? This is our, right here. If we follow this, this is actually, again, only our $100 loss. So we're still up. And let's say we start getting the hang of things a little bit and we make another 250, right? And we make another 250 and we make a another 250, right? But let's say we had a little bit of bad luck and we have just as many losses. Let's say one right? Two and three. You know, we're not even close to where we started because our losses are so minimum. And let's say again, we could just keep bouncing around a little bit where, you know, we have a, a win right here, 
right? We could say we have another loss. You know, that brings us down just a little bit, but it's not even that much bigger. And let's say we, you know, finish off, you know, pretty strong right here, right? With, you know, three wins. Now, if we look at this, what's going on, right? Even though, right, what's happening? And we, could, we can even add a couple losses right here. Let's add, you know, two, uh, two to three losses, you know, right here at the end. Even though we have how many losses? We have, let's bring it down right here. If we have one loss, two loss, three loss, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have 10 losses, all right? So let's go with 10 Ls. How many wins do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine wins, nine wins and 10 losses. And look at our chart. Look how much money we've been able to make, right? Look how much money we've made. We, this was zero. This was zero right here. This is a few hundred dollars at this point, right? That we're able to continue to grow our accounts right? We're able to continue to grow our accounts. We're able to continue to move right here because all we're doing is following this two to one ratio. And if we continue to follow this two to one ratio, what do you think is going to happen? This could, you know, be a thousand dollars right here. And then this could be $10,000 up here. If we just follow this two to one ratio, you know, we can't lose unless all of a sudden all we do is lose, 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 lose. As long as you have, you know, some sort of education in the stock market and you win every now and then, you're going to be able to make back all your money every single time and you're going to be able to progress. This trader right here has nine losses, lost nine times. Uh, or excuse me, this trader has 10 losses and won. Only won nine times. It's, this person has lost more than they have won and they're still up hundreds of dollars in the stock market because every single time the stock goes to 250 bucks they make their money and every time they cut out you know what they're down 100 bucks but they basically need two and a half losses for every single win and that's why again you just keep going up 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 so that's what's so great about the two to one ratio now what's the problem with the two to one ratio the problem with the two to one ratio is people don't follow it right? That's the main issue with the two to one ratio. People just don't follow the two to one ratio. A lot of people always just say to themselves, oh, you know what? Um, you know, I'll cut out if it goes a little bit lower than that 10 cent mark. Well, again, that doesn't help it. The two to one ratio works if you follow it. You lock in your profits, you know, where you said you're going to lock in and you lock out of your profits, you know, where you, or you lock out of your loss where you said you're going to get out. If you say to yourself, well, I'll let it go down to you know, 15 cents, you know, 18 cents. Well, now your loss is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And now when you get your win, guess what? You're not going to be able to make your loss back as easily, right? So we need to be very careful about uh, the two, two to one ratio that we actually follow it to a strict program. And if we follow it to a strict program, you know what? That's when uh, it's going to work best for us, all right? Now, do, can we get out a little bit earlier? you know, yes, you can get out a little bit earlier. If I would say if it was on the loss side, um, you know, obviously the stock market is going to be changing constantly, constantly. If you see volume dying off, maybe lock in your gain. If you see that the stock, if you see the stock again, is not holding up very well, well then again, get out, right? One of the big things, you know, I'm actually going to talk about this in a little bit. We're going to talk about stop losses and we're going to talk about big things, you know, that a lot of new traders do with stop uh, stock losses. Um, but I do want to talk about this. Where do we enter plays, guys? You know, let's touch up on our entries a little bit because we just went over our two to one ratio, which is absolutely beautiful, right? We just went over our two to one ratio and we talked about getting in on a play. We're holding it for 25 cents, selling it, you know, at 10 cents, 12 cents, a thousand shares, right? But where do we get in? In on plays. Well, there's two areas that we want to get in on plays, guys. We get in on plays at the break of resistance. We get in on plays on bounce off support, or we get in on play. That's it. All right. There's no third. We like to get in on plays at the break of resistance or bounce off support, right? Are there going to be, you know, certain patterns that I'm going to teach you that you get in on plays maybe a little bit different? Yes, maybe a little bit early, but as a new trader, just trying to build your foundation, don't ever go anywhere else. It's either on support or it's break of resistance. These are the two main areas. And what do I mean never in between? Well, this is what, you know, a great picture. I showed you guys this earlier. When we are buying a play, right? Where can we buy it? Well, if we're looking at this diagram, do we want to buy it right here at resistance? No, because resistance has not yet broke and the stock starts falling on down. But where can we buy it? On support. 
and then we could sell it where at resistance but we're not holding it because it's resistance is still holding and then we buy it where on support and then we could sell it where at resistance and then where can we buy a stock at support and then where do we sell it well wait a minute we just broke through this resistance line so we can actually keep holding or if we didn't buy on any of these, you know, oh, did we break resistance? No. Did we break resistance? No. Did we break resistance? Yes. All right, I'm putting my entry in now. Now the stock shoots up to our resistance line. But what we don't want to do, guys, is we don't want to buy like here. We don't want to buy in the middle, hoping that maybe it pops back on up. We don't want to buy in the middle because in the middle, what could happen? This could turn and start falling, and the middle could keep on going on up. In the middle, we don't know which direction, you know, it, we're going to be going right? We don't know which is the right way, all right? What would you rather be on? Imagine, you know, you get lost, right? You get lost on a road and, um, you know, you could either be in the middle of a four-way, you know, imagine being in the middle of an intersection and trying to figure out the right way or just being on a one-way and it's like, all right, I'm lost. This is the only road, you know, in the whole entire, you know, next few miles. I mean, this is the only road I can take. This has to be the correct road, right? Or, oh my gosh, you know, I'm at a four-way right now. I have no idea which way to go. I could go that way, this way, this way, that way. It's like, why buy, you know, where we could go so many different directions? Or it's really just, hey, support's holding on up. We're only going up. Break of resistance, we're going up. But we don't want to buy right in the middle. Because if we buy right in the middle, what's going to happen? The stock could go in either direction, and that's where we could really end up losing. So buying at support, or we buy at the break of resistance. So where do we sell stocks, guys? We sell stocks if we see one, again, the next resistance line. We see volume drying on up, or again, this little side note, the higher the stock is percentage-wise, the more risk there is. So again, let's take this in. Number one, where do we sell stocks? The next resistance line, right? We could sell stocks if we see volume drying up, which I'll teach you guys how to see that on the level two during our level two lessons. Or number three is the higher the stock is percentage-wise, the more risk there is going to be. So if we go back to this picture right here, where do we sell stocks? Resistance. Why do we sell it? Because it's going back down to support. Where do we sell it? Resistance. Where do we sell it? Well, we just broke. Where's the next line of resistance? Where do we figure out the next line of resistance, guys? The next line of resistance is going to be natural chart history or detailed so that's where we have to study let's say we're looking at this play and all of a sudden the stock starts breaking on out this could be five dollar resistance this could be a 200 day moving average this could be the previous close right there's a lot of different areas of resistance but after a stock breaks resistance we can hold the stock until the next resistance line right so we're all good we can hold the stock until the next resistance line, which is very important for you guys to understand. Something else I want you guys to be able to get, you know, if we see volume drying up. Volume drying up is something that you guys will be able to see by the level two. It's just from the lack of bids and lack of action start coming through on this play. Obviously, if we start seeing a lot of slowness, if people aren't excited about that play anymore, if no one's playing it, it's gonna start turning and going to the other side. You know, stocks spike and stocks rip the most when what? Right, stocks spike and stocks rip the most when there's the most excitement, the most momentum. People want to get into it. If we start seeing that fade away, stocks start falling. We also want to stay away from stocks or sell them when they get too high in percentage. Now, what do I mean by that? If a stock is up 100%, 200%, 300%, we probably want to sell. Right? For example, GNCA, this is probably the first thing that cuts, uh, caught, uh, catches your eye. If a stock goes from $4 and spikes all the way to $11, you don't want to be buying the stock most likely at $10 or $11 because at any moment, this thing's going to be dumping on you. It's ran over 100%. That's a massive move. It's going to be falling. Even look over here when this stock went on this nice move from $4 all the way up to $7. The stock will get a massive dump. The stronger the move up, the stronger the move down. Gradual climb up, gradual climb down. This is where you can make the big money, but if you're late and you don't realize how high the percentages is, the percentages, the more risk there is, means the more money you can lose. Okay? So you guys need to understand that. Absolutely. All right? Now, something that we're going to be moving on, which is absolutely crucial, is why do we use stop losses? 
right? Why are we going to be using stop losses? Why are we going to be getting involved with stop losses? What the heck is a stop loss, <laughs> right? So a stop loss order is an order placed with a broker to sell a security when it reaches a certain price. Stop loss orders are designed to limit an investor's loss on a position in a security. Although most investors associate a stop loss order with a long position, it can also predict a short position, in which cases the security gets bought if it trades above the defined price so let's stick with it you know on you know the normal side which is we buy long we buy stocks for it to go up and they start coming back on down if you guys don't know what a stop loss is a stop loss looks like this let's say we buy a stock you know and the price right here is at one dollar right we put our stop loss at 94 cents so if the stock starts moving on up and then all of a sudden makes a dramatic turn what happens the stock will cut us out. Our stop loss will cut us out. So let's say this is a thousand shares. We get out one dollar. We have a stop loss at ninety four cents. The most we can lose is six hundred dollars because we lost what six cents or excuse me sixty dollars. Excuse me. So we have a um, thousand shares at one dollar. The stock falls down to ninety four cents. The most we can lose is sixty dollars. That's not that bad of a loss. All right. But if we didn't have our stop loss, look how big this is. This is where we could lose $600, right? But this stop loss right here cut us out right away. This stop loss got us out of the play. Woo! Got us out. Woo! Right? Who's ever been in this position? This guy. We're just like, woo, got out of that play. Thank goodness. Right? So our buy, when we get in on a play, we always want to put a stop loss underneath. Now, Stop losses do take a little bit of time because you have to type them out, pick what price you want, go ahead and put a separate order on your stop loss. Now, I personally, because I'm a little bit more experienced, I use mental stop losses. So what is a mental stop loss? A mental stop loss is when I would be like, hey, you know what? Um, I am going to get out of this play when it hits 94 cents. But a stock will be moving so fast that I don't want to take the time to go ahead and put some sort of stop loss in. And I also like to give it a little bit of wiggle room. So maybe if it comes down to like 95, 96 cents, you know, even if I see something maybe a little different where it's only going to drop down for a second, I don't want to be taken out. But I'm a little bit more experienced than most people, right? Now, with that being said, a lot of new traders are going to say, oh, well, Dex using a mental stop loss. I want to use a mental stop loss. Please do not use a mental stop loss. If you guys are new to the market, please use an actual stop loss because I see this happen all the time. You buy in at $1. I say, all right, guys, I'm going to be selling as my stop loss at $0.94 cents if the stock comes down there. I'll be locking my target at around one twenty-five. What happens? The stock starts moving. starts moving. It's at one ten, right? It starts falling a little bit. starts falling. Then it starts dumping, right? I will get out at $0.94 cents or so, right? I'll get out right at the area that I want to. But a lot of new traders, oh, this is their first time they're losing money. This is the first time they see themselves in the red. Oh, I've been working so hard for this account. I don't want to take a loss. It'll come back up. All right, you know, I'll let it go down to 90 cents as my lowest. All right, well, now it's at 90 cents. All right, now I'm down 100 bucks. All right, let's just give it a little bit. It'll pop back up. A little bit more time. It'll pop back on up. Just take a breath. Now it's at 85 cents. All right, all right, 85 cents. Okay, just, you know, it has to come back on up. It just fell from 110 all the way down to 85 cents. It wouldn't make sense if it just kept falling at this point. Now it's down at 70 cents. Oh my gosh, well now I'm down 300 bucks at this point, or uh, down 300 bucks at this point. I don't even have that big of a count to start. Well, I'm just gonna hold it at this point, right? And you know, if I, if I sell it, you know, that's ruining a lot of my account, so I might as well just keep holding it. Stock's down to 40 cents. Down, now, now I'm down 500 bucks. You no, know, I see that happen way too much, right? I get in on a play, I have a stop loss, you know, very close. And I stick to my stop loss because I don't wanna be that person that's saying, oh, oh yada, yada, yada. I've been that person before when I first started. Just put a stop loss in that gets rid of your emotion. When you're a brand new trader, you're going to be emotional. You're going to hope a lot of things happen. You're going to pray a lot of things happen. You're going to look up to your computer and you're going to scream at it and you're going to say to yourself, please work out for me. But you know what? Your computer doesn't talk back. Wall Street doesn't care about your feelings. All right, I'm not trying to be mean. They don't care about my feelings either. So what do you got to do? You got to be tough. You got to be raw. You got to be able to bounce back. You got to be able to take it. You got to be able to give it right? So what we have right here, we buy a stock. It doesn't work out with our favor. We don't let Wall Street get the best of us. We rip off the Band-Aid. We move on, right? You know what we do? We hop in our next trade. We get our money back and more. But we do not sit there and dwell on a losing play and hoping, oh my gosh, please come back on up. 
Oh my gosh, please do it. Oh, please, deck, help me. What? You know, again, that's not going to ever help. All right. We put our stop losses in, we cut our quick, uh, cut our losses quickly. So important. I don't want to sound mean right here, but I want it to, again, extremely stress it. Because if you guys do not follow stop losses, you are going to ruin most of your account from plays that are not, you know, worth, even worth your time anymore. Um, and a lot of times, guys, what I want to, you guys to also understand is you don't need to wait until your stop losses hit, right? You don't need to wait until your stop losses hit, guys, right? If you have, if you buy in on a stock at $1 and a stock goes down, to let's say 98 cents and there's no volume and there's no activity. You can just sell there at 98 cents. If I buy a stock at $1 and nothing happens and the stock is just sitting at $1 and I say to myself, all right, you know, it's not really looking that good. Okay, just sell at $1. Break out with a $0 win, $0 loss and we'll go to your next play. You know, some people I feel like they buy in on a play and it's either, hey, you know, I'm not selling this until it hits my stop loss. It's like, it doesn't need to hit your stop loss. If you know you're going to lose, just get out and move on, right? But some people are like, nope, I'm going to keep on holding this. I'm going to keep on holding this until, you know, it hits my stop loss at least. And it's like, we know you're going to lose, but just, you know, you don't want to get out yet, right? Don't sit on a play that's not going to make you money. Don't sit on a play that you know isn't going to do well and you just need your stop loss to be hit, right? The analogy I always give here, guys, is, you know, stocks are basically like a relationship. You're going to have good relationships. You're going to have bad relationships. And when you get involved with a stock, right, what's going to happen? It's basically like, you know, getting involved with someone, right? You could be like, oh, wow, this person is absolutely great. You know, absolutely uh, fantastic. My family loves them, right? <laughs> and what happens? You know, the stock goes on, you know, that's you making a whole bunch of money in the stock market, right? Or, again, it'd be like a stock is just falling, falling, falling on you. And that's just like, oh, that person cheats on me every day. You know, it hates me. It's always so rude with me. It's like, well, then why are you still sticking with you? You know, why, why are you still with that person? It's like, oh, I love him. And it's like, you know, deep down, I can change him. He'll come. He'll come around. Yeah, please, please love me. <laughs> right? So it's like, you don't need that. Just rip the Band-Aid on, move on. There's a million fish in the sea. There's a million stocks out there. You're going to make a lot more money. But you got to get out. You got to move on to something better. Or you're just going to sit there and be this guy, hoping again that you somehow make some sort of miracle trade where it comes back on up. All right? Stick to your stop losses, guys. Make sure you guys follow our two-to-one ratio, which is so important, right? Absolutely important. 25-cent profit, usually around a 10 to 12-cent stop loss. We prepare to succeed. We have our entry plans. We are buying stocks off the bounce of support, break of resistance. We are selling stocks at resistance or when they get up too high or when volume dries off and we are setting our stop losses, right? So... That's going to be going over all of day eight right there. I hope you guys enjoyed that lesson, understanding the two to one ratio and getting a great feel about where we buy, where we sell, where we put our stop losses and having that strategy entry plan and that two to one to be able to get a great understanding of how to make money consistently in this market.